know. It's my man, Mac, Mac Kaya, McCraven. Starting this thing off right. Welcome to Hidden Gems Happy Hour. It's your, it's your host, McBrizzle. We back, we back, we back. What's going on, everybody? Just waiting for Cass to settle in here, man. Very excited. Today I get to talk to uh, the great D. Alexander, the Chicago treasure. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and, you know, just get to pick her brain about the, the, the music scene in Chicago, all over the world, all that great stuff. Um, I want to shout out real quick my sponsor, uh, Shannon Shannon Records. She's been putting out masks for all the... Uh, all the interviewers uh, that's been doing this during the quarantine, you know, uh, from everybody since, since I got sponsored, I should say. So she's been doing that. And uh, man, it's been a beautiful thing, a great uh, partnership. Uh, I want to shout out all you guys who've been checking out the, the podcast on any type of regularity. I appreciate you guys so much. Uh, yeah, so I think that's it for right now. I got some more people coming in later. We'll shout them out. But uh, when I say more people, more people coming along the live interviews. Um, and if you're enjoying this and you want to spread the word to more people, share it with like one person. We just ask it for one. You know what I'm saying? We try to get them in one at a time. Nothing too heavy. So without further ado, let's welcome, uh, let's do a virtual round of applause for guest today, D. Alexander. I think she's coming in now. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. <laughs> Look at you. I love those glasses. Can't see without them. <laughs> <laughs> so these, this is a, this is a, necess a necessity. This is not a out of necessity. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, hey. How you doing? Oh, man, I'm doing all right. I'm hanging, I'm hanging in there. I'm, you know. Aren't we all? We yeah. are a resilient people, aren't we? <laughs> we, we are, we are, we are a resilient bunch, boy. I, I tell you. I tell you. That's how, that's exactly how I feel. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. We have, but, to. I mean, we don't really have much of a choice. You know, it's either do or, pardon the pun, die, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. No and doubt about it. We've lost a lot of people, unfortunately, you know, to this and, you know, but uh, hey, we keep on hanging on. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost it's like you, you, that's, that's really all you can do. And, and, um, you know, yeah. in, in a sense, um, not you know not that you're not that we're powerless to do anything else but it's um you know it just in a moment with everything the uncertainty of what's going on uh you know the government's still trying to figure out exactly how to deal with the thing right um you know at the moment we could just kind of hurry up and wait you know and be yeah. patient yeah and, and most important most importantly i say just be um you know cognizant of the fact that we're here in the moment Mm -hmm. and, just try, and just trying to enjoy it for what it is, you know, right now, try to make the most of it. But it's it's hard. It's, you know. Well, for me, it's like being productive while you're sheltering, you know, mm -hmm. doing, I'm sure we all have things that we need to do at home. I know I can, huh, how much time do we have just now? <laughs> um, I am working on so many, <laughs> so many projects and I'm just trying to, you know, just keep a balance and try to get so as many things as I can get done, you know, while uh, we're in sheltering in place. Cause I know once the doors open and once they really open, we're going to be ripping and running again, but you know, yeah. I, I want to pace myself. It, to me, it's just a message to, to really pace yourself, do those things that you need to do for yourself, take care of your business, mm -hmm. you know, and stay healthy. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, I think, yeah, exactly. I think, and I think, honestly, that's the most important thing that you yeah. can do. Yeah, You know, Absolutely. Take, take care of yourself, stay healthy, all that good stuff. So, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, um, yeah, I mean, similarly, the same thing, Try, trying to uh, take advantage of the time while understanding that the, the time was caused by, by uh, trauma, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, so the days that I don't feel like doing anything, that's okay. Yeah. N not necessarily pushing myself to, you know, I, you got to yeah. do something. You got to be, you know, all of that stuff. Just Man. take it one day at a time. You know, we're all guilty of it. We're all guilty <laughs> of rush, 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 you know, got to get to the next gig, you know, and just trying to make ends meet and keep food on the table. And you know how we do that by yeah. working and right. staying creative, you know, so... <laughs> Yeah. So Definitely. now we got to find different ways of being creative, which we can, which we are. Look at what we're doing now. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, this, 
this is really good to be able to talk to you like this, whether it's yeah. on the phone, but to see your face is, is really cool. So I think this is really, really a cool platform. Oh man. Well, you know, um, I, the, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to, to bring you on here, you know, uh, I mean, you, you rep you've represented for the city so, so well, so, so long, you know, a very long, illustrious career in, in Chicago. And, um, you know, I just wanted to talk to you about the background on that and, you know, yeah. where you, you know, where you see yourself going, moving forward and, and all, you know, all of those good things, you know, so you, okay. all right, <laughs> I'm just trying to balance. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's all good. I, I had to get it. I, had to... I feel like I'm, wait a minute, let me make sure that I'm. Feel like I need a booster chair or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. I, there we go. I can I can see you if 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 um if you could bring it down a little bit that'll help. That like bam, you right, right there. there. Yeah, that's perfect. I need so, Sean here to help me with all this. <laughs> she she's joined. Sean, where you at, girl? <laughs> <laughs> he always helps me with all this kind of stuff. <laughs> nah, you doing you doing great. You doing great. Um. <laughs> So you know you're one of the you're one of the musicians you're one of the musicians in Chicago. I mean, besides, it's funny that Justin just got here because he he was born. You know, uh, he he's he's also a West Side ish representative. You know, yes. but uh, yeah, you was born on the West Side, and I I was wondering, you know, it's um, at coming up in Chicago, I didn't hear a lot about like West Side spots. Right. So what are what's what are some of the you know the the West Side spots that you were like grew up grew up during the time, you know, where there's some spots that you like, you saw coming up as, as you were growing that, that already closed, you know, that kind of thing. You know what, I, you know what, it's interesting that you should ask me that. I was, um, you know, I grew up, still live on the West side, West side, you know, and I'm mm -hmm. still living, I've inherited my, my grandmother's property and I've seen the changes and some of them are really good changes and some are needed changes. Um, but as far as the clubs, I didn't really hang out a lot on the, there was a club on, oh God, what was the name of that club? It was on a little side street called Fifth Avenue. Uh, <laughs> and I can't, I really can't remember the name of it. And I really didn't start hanging, when I was old enough to really start hanging out in clubs, um, I got introduced to the clubs on the South Side, you know, by a fellow uh, West Sider named Theophilus Reed. Yes, you know the Theopolis. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, yes. man! Theopolis. I, 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 the, exactly. the, Theopolis gave me some of my first, <laughs> my some of my first work in Chicago, man. Yeah, uh, we, we we were working. I mean, we we started working together with uh my man um uh Greg Penn. We started working with yeah. with Crosswinds. Uh -huh, and and uh -huh. then from and then from there, Theopolis would call me on his own gigs, man. First of all, that name is powerful, Theopolis. Theopolis, yeah. There, there is only Reed. there is only one Theopolis in right. this entire planet. And you hear Theopolis or Theo, you know who we're talking about, man. Shout out to wherever he is in the world, man. I hope everything is cool, man. man. Yeah, he's he's here in Chicago. I see him out and about. He's still doing great. He's doing just fine. That's but my Theopolis, dude introduced me kind of like to the to the music scene I rem I'll never forget my first um he took me to this place called the Progressive Arts Center which was on 16th either 16th in Michigan or 16th in Wabash <laughs> and it was run by this brother named Obi Creed who's a master leather handbag craftsman leather craftsman and Obi would throw these sets and the first time that Theophilus took me there it was like up like seemed like 50 stairs because it was up in a loft before loft became lofts became really fashionable yeah uh and i just remember walking across the threshold and it was like the old d alexander died and then i was reborn because <laughs> seriously because you know I, that's that was my introduction to the aacm and yes and all of the fabulous fabulous artisans and craftsmen here in chicago uh when i walked in it was a uh, Rita Warford and um uh Equa Colson and Mawata Bowden and they were performing wow. and they the, the sisters I was so impressed because they had on these big beautiful bright colored dresses and these huge earrings and their hair was all wild and you know and I'm just this little snotty old sister from the west side I didn't I wasn't you know I didn't this was my first exposure to this and I loved it because I loved that they were courageous enough to express themselves that way. 
Yeah. And it seems like from that point on, I I was just eager and hungry for that kind of energy, you know, because it really fed me. Yeah. And so that's how I got introduced, like to like Henry Huff, who was my my uh, mentor, and to Muntu Dance Theater and Ellie Honai and Prana Ensemble. And that's kind of like where this journey began, you know. I was I, that was that was actually one of my questions was you know how the the introduction to the AACM. Yeah. Um, what 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 would you say made the transition where where you became a member? Because that's a, I think that's a different type of commitment if that if that makes sense, you know. Because I, I mean I've done you know being in Chicago I've done some work with the AACM and, and shout out to all that you know those incredible musicians mm -hmm. and, and that outfit. But like, uh, what 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 made you want to become a member of the group? Uh, specifically, oh, gosh. you know, just hanging out with those brothers, hanging out with like Henry Huff and and and. Uh, Ernest Kabir Dawkins and you know mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ed Wilkerson and Mawata and those cats and the sisters too Rita and Nicole Mitchell. Yeah, I, yeah. I just love the energy and I love what what they what they were all about in terms of um, being comfortable in their own skin with their own with their own with their own compositions and their own music, and it wasn't. The palette wasn't for everyone. A lot of people are like, oh, I can't get into that music. I, but I loved it from the very beginning. It wasn't anything that I had to grow into. And I just wanted to be a part of that. So I started hanging out and I started going to the gigs. And I just, you know, I would go to all of their gigs and support them. And then one day, Ari Brown, you know, because you have to be, you know, inducted or someone from the one of the organizational members um, will ask you, if, you know, to come on and be a part. And that's 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 what I did. I became a member. So, and I loved it. Yeah. I love it. They're, you know, because they're crazy and they're energetic and they're, they're so uh, solid and, you know, and they're strong and I love all of that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Definitely. And the definitely. music that comes out of it, you know, the music that comes out of it, non-compare. So, yeah. What, now when, um, growing up, would you say like, what was, was jazz your first influence? Like who was your influences coming up? on the west side you know young you know black woman at, at during that time you know uh was, was jazz your first music that you really started checking out or was it something that you know you you eased yourself into well you know i have to and everybody that knows me and that has heard my story they all know that i give thanks to my mom my mother and i always you know share this with parents to play your music for your children because as a child growing up here on the west side and for a while we lived in the henry horner projects you know hmm. And we, my mother, every day, she put her hi-fi on and she would iron and I would hear the music of King Pleasure and, and Cold Train and yeah. uh, uh, Johnny Hartman and Eddie Jefferson. And mm -hmm. I love this music, you know, I loved it. And I could, you know, I, I remember the, remembered, <laughs> she said one day I came to the kitchen rubbing my eyes, asking her, and I had on the little onesie, you know, the little one piece that zips up the, 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 with the feet in it. And I yeah. went to the kitchen, I said, Bobby, who is that lady crying in about her man? <laughs> Billie Holiday. And I love Billie's voice. I mean, even though it was, she was singing about what my mother played, she was singing those really down, the, the downtrodden, you know, my man don't love me, blah, blah, blah. But it was the, her voice and her stories and, Still to this day, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there's, I mean, to this, there's, this day, there's no voice like Billy Holiday. None, I mean, none. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, inc incomparable. So, all right, so you grew, you grew up with with jazz music in the house. That, I grew up with jazz music in the house, and naturally, when I started going to school in high school, I was involved in all kinds of. What what high school you go to? I went to Providence St. Mel. Pro okay, yeah. yeah. Purple, yeah. Purple and golden knights, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and uh, you know, while there, I was always involved in the arts, theater, music, cheerleading, all kinds of things. I was just involved in everything. But uh, music was f first and foremost the thing that I loved the most. And I had a, was in a little singing group. You know, we did the steps, and you know, we make up the choreography. And we did all of that. So, and it was such, it was so much fun, so much fun. Nice, nice, man. Well, well, you know, we'll we'll get into some music, and then I'll ask you some more questions. Uh, anybody who's listening, if you have questions, there's a questions box here. Now you can put them on the screen, but I can't guarantee you that I'm gonna get to them. But if you put them in the questions box, I can guarantee you that I will look at them at the very least. 
<laughs> um, but, you, you know, so if you have questions, feel free to put them in the questions box. We're going to jump into some music here. Let me let me just turn this TV up a little bit. So um, let's talk about your 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 record. Uh, I, you know, I, I checked it out a while ago. Uh -huh. it, was all, it was always a record that uh, it, when, when I um, first got to New York, I checked it out and I was like, oh, that's dope. I'm going to have to, you know, I'm going to have to keep that in mind. And then, uh, you know, now is now is the time we're here. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> um, let's talk. Let's talk about uh, your band a little bit. You, you've had the same unit for a very long time. Uh, you know, Miguel De La Serna, the, the, yes. the great pianist. Yes. Uh, it does. Um, and Harrison Bankhead. Yes. And I, I can't remember who the, who's on who's on drums. You said Ernie Adams. That's right, Ernie. Of course. Don't you dare uh, forget him. I, I mean, listen. I, I, I mean, I should have. But it, you know, listen. I don't, don't tell him. I'm sorry, Ernie. Oh, I love you, bro. Keep faith with me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, man. You know, um, what? Uh, who does the arrangements on 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 a lot of those charts? Because there were some very specific arrangements, especially this this one, this first one we're gonna check out, which is Perdido. It's uh, it's a, different than you usually hear it. Mr. Miguel de la Serna. Miguel, okay. you know, he's the madman on the keys. <laughs> that was his arrangement. And uh, what can you say? I mean, it was just, just bad. Because, you know, when I, when I thought of, when I came up with doing, I wanted to pay homage to my mom while she's still alive, you know. So mm -hmm. I kind of selected songs that I grew up listening to. And Perdido was one of them, you know, and Sarah, you know, Sarah sang it. But I have to admit, when I when I heard the song, I was like, hmm, this is one of the songs my mother loves, but it needs something. You know, I said to Miguel, it, it, can you, we need to add, a, we need to do something with it, because it's a very simple tune. Mm -hmm. So I gave it to Miguel, and psh, the arrangement it, he came up with, incredible. <laughs> great, great. Well, this is, uh, this is from the record, Songs My Mother Loves. So this, this I mean, that, that makes a lot more sense. Growing up in yeah. Chicago, you're hearing all of these songs that you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're your mother is playing for you, and 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 then you know to to have that tribute album. That's that's a beautiful thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um. So yeah, we're gonna check this out. This is Perdido songs my mother loves by the Chicago Treasure, D. Alexander. Uh, we'll check out a couple of minutes of that. We'll uh, get to some more uh, questions that I have. Uh, if you guys have any questions, this is a great time to put them in the questions box. Uh, shout out everybody checking this out. I appreciate y'all tuning in. And uh, here we go. Let's give this a listen. JFB, what's up, man? Beautiful, beautiful, man. I, I love, I, like I said, you know, I, I've heard you, I've had the pleasure to hear the band uh, several times, um, be, you know, being from the city, being from Chicago and, and, and coming up on that scene. And, and the band is just so tight. The arrangements are always so tight, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was, it, you know, it was just great to hear you guys 
Well, they were so tight because then we were, you know, we were working a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. We had had tons of gigs and, and, you know, and the, and the beautiful thing is that the music, uh, it just morphed and it just went in so many different directions. And the thing that I love about these cats and also, I have to shout out to Junius. Junius Paul is also Junius you know, JP. JP, um, <laughs> he, <laughs> you know the the cats is like when I decide to go in a direction, it's like they go with me, you know. And it's just such a beautiful thing. It's just innate, and it's it's a blessing when you have musicians to work with you that that follow you or go with you rather. It's not even following. It's like we're all on this, on one accord within the music. So we just kind of like. You know, Miguel may go a certain way. We all go there. I may go a different way. We go there. And we yeah. all go together. And it's such a beautiful thing. And it's rare. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. It is when you, to have To have everybody, you know, to, to have everybody who's willing to follow. Sometimes people can be exactly. so, you know, people can be rigid with the music. But exactly. usually uh, a band is when, where you hear that flexibility, mm-hmm. which is great. You know, mm-hmm. you could you mm-hmm. could tell a new you could tell a newer band because like the the music will be moving and the cat will just stay there. Like I'm just reading the part. You know, exactly. Like, we out the part. We've been out the part for 32 minutes. <laughs> and the part is over. That's understandable in a new group until you feel each other. But you know, after yeah. a while, you can move those charts out of the way and just say. Mm-hmm. And we cook it. We we cook it yeah. now, man. I, yeah. Whenever 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 I see whenever I see a band without charts, I'm like, all right. I I know I know I know some shit's about to go down. You, exactly. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's 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 great, man. For real. That's right. Um, right. What 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 college did you go to? I don't think I I uh I tried I, to do my little research, but you, you know. You know what? I went to DePaul University for one year. Hated it. Well, I you know. I, <laughs> Because I thought I wanted to go into business administration and all that kind of stuff because I thought that was the right thing to do, which, you know, hindsight 2020 probably would have been. But I wouldn't be here now talking to you about this music. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. um, I went there for a year. And then after that, I went to Columbia College and I was studying, believe it or not, I was studying radio, radio and television. And for those of you that don't know, I do have a radio show by way she of... Does. I was I was gonna get I was gonna get to it you know I was gonna I was gonna get to it yeah go, yeah, go ahead hit, hit them by way of, of WFMT's jazz network and it's it's a wonderful a wonderful opportunity and I have to thank Neil Tesser um, uh, for kind of like introducing me to the WFMT staff and they welcome me with open arms and it's beautiful it's not a, it, the shows are recorded it's not a live uh, a show it, they're recorded in advance and but they're syndicated across over 200 markets which is beautiful so you can it's being played in china it's being played in russia it's being played in canada all across the united states and i get wonderful emails and you know messages from people saying that they really like um the the, the music that i'm playing because my aim is to be you know to play the music that people don't normally hear on a regular you know, because there's so much music out here. Yeah, so yeah, yeah definitely. Much. And of mm-hmm. course, I play my homeboys and homegirls music, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my friends. Definitely. Yeah, of course. So, you got to um, gotta get, gotta throw some alley-oops out there. You I got to throw some alley-oops in there, man. You know, so I throw those alley-oops in there. And, and, you know, of course, the AACM's music, the art ensemble. And I'm very, I'm, I want it to be diverse because you, music is universal. So from A to Z, I'm playing everything from, Andy Bay to Joe Zawinul, you know, from A to Z, you know, yeah, everything. yeah, you know, vocalist, music, everything. I'm just playing everything. Definitely, that's that, that's so a, that's fun. a beautiful thing. It's so, so much li- fun, man. It's so much fun. I love it. So listen, musicians, if you know, if you got some records, man, throw throw them to D and uh, try to, you know, hey, I'm telling she, you, she, she 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 uh. She th- she hooking them up. Throw throw them out there. Yeah, get them get play, get some I, airplay. Give them, I give them an address where they can send it to as well. So yeah. <laughs> Speak, speaking of address, um, I make sure um, after this I'll get your address because um, I got I have a gift for you. We have a sponsor huh? for the for the for the for the live interviews. Yeah, what? I just got it. <laughs> yeah, so I I got a, I got a gift for you. So uh, just remind me. I just remind it. me. Okay. I, I was, yeah, I was gonna say, you know, I'll text it to you or message it, you know, either or. I got for you. Sure. We got each other's info. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, the another thing I want to ask you about, um, jewelry. You <laughs> love 
<laughs> jewelry. Yes, uh, I do. You, that that I mean, it's funny you talked about your your introduction to the to the AACM and, and the music because you're like you know just looking at the women with those beautiful gowns and the, and, yes. the, and the jewelry. Oh just, my god! So so uh, can you you know I know that's one of your your hobbies outside of music, but can you uh, it's talk not a little? Even, it's not even a hobby. It's a way of life. <laughs> it's a way of life for me. And I'm gonna tell you something. It's yeah. been really interesting because for the past month and a half, I haven't had any jewelry on. I'm at home. Well, you know, well, why? So, like, even today, I said, oh, I got to get ready. I can put some little lipstick on, and I'm going to put some earrings on. Yeah. I, you know, the, the jewelry that I'm wearing right now are by my, my sister friend, Akoswa Bandele, and you can find her on Instagram at Akoswa Designs. And um, she is... I've been collecting from her for, for over 30 years. And mm -hmm. quite honestly, I don't need another piece of jewelry. And she'll tell me that in a minute. Step away from the table, you know. <laughs> sure. You say, D, D, you done about a thousand dollars worth of jewelry. You got to get out of here. <laughs> but see, I'm an advocate for supporting, you know, my, my artists and friends as well as they support me. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, I love, I love jewelry. I collect from everyone. I collect from um, Andra Heard, uh, Stone and Alchemy. I collect from uh, who else? I can't even think right now. A, a brother that was near and dear to me who transitioned. His name was Neoti. Uh, his birthday, just his heavenly birthday was yesterday and I miss him so much. Uh, but yeah, I collect jewelry from Takara. You know, I, I know, I know you, I know you, K Fly, K Fly. I know about K Fly. Oh, yeah, I, of course. I'd miss if I didn't mention my baby. Fly. I mean, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's, and not that's, just jewelry, but wearable art as well. You know, Jimmy King and Greta and, you know, I just buy essential elements. I, you know, I just, I believe in supporting my, my brothers and my sisters and they, as well as they support me. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. Do you have a, yeah. uh, do you have any other hobbies besides uh besides jewelry that you do or not hobbies, but the other things that you're into you know. Well, you know what? I'm always it's it's so interesting that that you should ask me that because I've always been very artistic, even as a child. At one point, I I I wanted to be a fashion illustrator, so I was always sketching and doing things like that. So I really, really want to. But I just need the space to do it. I need just extra space, one more extra room <laughs> that I can have a studio. And my good friend Candice, <laughs> my good friend Candice Hunter is doing a fabulous job here on on instagram and at facebook with her she's having these hour-long um uh sessions with doing collages and printmaking and i've been kind of checking checking that out as well i'm like oh, i'm gonna do a collage i think i could do that as well but yeah i i love uh i love art i love sewing you know and now i used to always say i don't have time to do that well now i do so <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, I hear what you. That's 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 great. So you you you're trying to get into a little fashion a little bit. Oh, not fashion, but designing fashion. Designing. Well, I've always because when I was younger, especially when I was in uh, in college, in Columbia, I used to make all my clothes, and I would just lay the fabric down on the floor, you know, cut it out, sew it up, no rhyme, no reason, and it was always asymmetrical, kind of like the kind of things you see now. And I was like, I was doing that thirty years ago, you know. <laughs> I guess there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> nah, but no. I don't for sure. have the tailoring experience though, and I would never sew for anyone else. I just do it for myself. You don't want to see my finishing. <laughs> so. All right, that's 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 what's up. You you can sew a, you can sew a scarf though. You can yeah. do a couple. Yeah, I I'll sew. take it. I'll, I'll take a scarf. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. That's very simple. I keep that in mind. <laughs> well, uh, I guess I'll ask you. Um, I'll ask you one more. You know, one more question. We'll get into some more music. But what? Um, what made you want to get into radio? Um, you know, what? What? What gave you the idea? Or, or was it something that somebody impressed upon you, and and then you, you know, you started liking it, or like, what? What? Yeah. What made you get into um, doing radio shows? Well, you know, growing up, you know. Basically, all we had as kids is after a certain point was the radio. I listened to the radio all the time, you know, WVON, you know, um, and and after the after the regular radio soul stations would go off, you know, you listen to mm -hmm. WLS, and then that's my exposure to what blue eyed soul, if you will. 
Mm -hmm. um, and I've always loved the banter, and and especially I I I love music, and I love the artists that create the music, and just being, you know, learning the history of the artists and how they got into the music. It's just a gas band. I, so it's it, and, and I love um, just being able to connect with the different performing artists as well. So that you know, and, and now I've been fortunate enough to even host with uh, Dan Bender at uh, uh, WDCB, you know, when we had the, the last three um, yeah. jazz festivals, I co-hosted with him recording, um, recording, broadcasting live from backstage at uh, Pritzker Pavilion. So I got an opportunity to see, you know, Christian McBride. And he's yeah. Such, such a cool brother, you know. Yeah, 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 for sure. For He's sure. So cool and so down to earth, and just you know, Kurt Elling, and just hanging out with all the artists, and it's so cool, man. They're just regular people, just trying to make it and being in a position to spread some joy around the world through music. So that's really cool. yeah. Look, spe speaking as somebody who loved jewelry, Me Megan McNeil just got in here to talk about D. Them glasses, I love them. <laughs> Megan, I got. Uh, wait a minute. Speaking of things. Megan, I got some glasses for you, girl. I got plenty. Oh! Another thing that I do, I sell eyeglass frames. What? Get out of here! I do, and I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to rip anybody off. You know. Let me let, let me tell you something. At, the, at this at this stage of the game, you can do what we can. It's it's no more rules anymore. Okay? No, there. Wait a minute. I'm a Jamaican. You know, I can I can sell eyeglass frames. I can sew. I can sing. Uh, That's I can paint. Uh, you know, I can sketch. I can cook. Uh, I'll even make you a nice margarita. You know? Hello. Now, see, I didn't know. I didn't know that you were uh, Jamaican. You know. Uh, no, I'm not Jamaican. Oh, I was like. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I was like, word. You know, you seen that skit on Saturday Night Live? You know, the, the Jamaican. Not yeah, Jamaican, yeah, 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 yeah. You just said. Color. You, 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 color. you know, you can do everything. Yeah, you got yeah. To. You I got you. Everything. You know, we got to be well you, in this business. <laughs> do you do you do men's friends? I got I got some friends. Yes. Talking right. to Junior's got four or five pairs of frames for me. Yes. Bet. I'm, all right. I'm on it then. I'm on it. Because I, I, I mean, you know, do you I would let it get. Do you work glasses? I do. I'm a, I'm, I, I could go get them so you can see. The, you know what? I'll go get them when the other. description is next level but oh, that ain't the oh, point it could, it could be any worse than mine my uh, uh no okay go ahead and, get them and i can check them out and i can size with you I'll, size i will you i will i will do that so you know what while i'm doing that we'll put on the uh metropolitan jazz i tell it was, it was fun i'm glad we talked you yeah. know i had i had your record and i was asking you you know if you were anything on and you you put me on this group uh a bunch of chicago veterans uh, yeah. made a made a really nice CD, some really nice arrangements. I like I like the writing on this. Yes. Um. So yeah, let me think here. All right, I might have to get them when the music is off. But when the music is off, I'll run and get them, and then I'll come right back. Okay. Because if I if I leave, I you know. But we're gonna put this on. This is uh off the Metropolitan Jazz Octet album. If you don't have that, you should check it out. It's called "It's Too Hot for Words," uh, featuring the great D. Alexander. And uh, we're sell and it's sell it's a celebration of Billie Holiday, who who is somebody who you grew up in and, yes. and, and very familiar with. Yes. So we're gonna ch we're gonna check this out. This is I'm a fool to want you. You know I love oh. love love the way you paint on uh, ballads. You know I oh, just yeah. Oh, yeah. oh man you yeah. get you just you sing a ballad and it just it just I don't know I would be feeling <laughs> like I'm in the damn club. It don't make no it don't make no sense. You know. <laughs> You know, I mean, I be feeling like I'm in, I'm in the club. I remember you were singing at Andy's, and, and you sang something. And you know, I, I, I'm a shit talker. You know, I like to talk my shit, sit at the bar. You know, and, and, and I be hanging. You know, but I was sitting there like, and Casey tried to talk me. I was like, Casey, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> me is singing a ballad. <laughs> okay, listen. Stop, when stop you, telling the story, man. Telling the story. It's, it's 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 certain people when they when they sing, man. That like the things stop for a second mm -hmm. or when when they play you know it just stops it's like all right you know and i i feel like you have Oh, <laughs> no. 
It is. It's your space. You don't. You don't rush into the into the the thing. You no. know what I'm saying? You like you. Yeah, tension and release. Taking your time, man. And, oh man. And leave. Wow. You know, leave room for you. Know, like you say, for for the breath. You know, of the, the airiness of the music. And yeah, um, yeah. That's it's like the first time I heard that song from Billy. You know, Lady in Satin. The very first time I heard it, and. I was so, she pulled, you know, Billy had this way of pulling you in. And mm -hmm. even though her voice, you know, she was kind of like not in her best voice, but it was beyond the voice. It was the story and the feeling that she conveyed and it just pulled you right in. So I've always loved that song as a result of that. And I just wanted to make sure that I paid, you know, perfect homage to Billy with the reinterpretation, because I'm, you know, can't I'm not trying to copy Billy or anybody in any form of fashion. Right, right. I, I, I think that's one of the things that I've always, you know, loved about your 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 voice. It's never it's never been a thing where you're trying to duplicate or imitate somebody. Uh -huh. you're, I, and I guess you know the AACM probably taught you to find your own voice, right? Well, you know, the beauty of the AACM and a couple of my musician friends, namely Miguel even said, he said, girl, the, the plus with you and the AACM, you know, I was taught, well, from my mentor, like Henry Huff, to be totally uninhibited and uh, don't be concerned about what people think, you know, because if I did half the stuff I did, I wouldn't do. <laughs> but, <laughs> but to, like you said, finding my own voice and just, you know, revoicing. And that's mm -hmm. the, the AACM is is a great um, platform. It was a great platform. Namely, when I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Fred Anderson, you yeah. know, and the Velvet Lounge, because that was a place where we went and we we sat there and we performed our music and we created our music right there on yeah. the spot, you know. And it was never the same twice, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no doubt about it, man. Yeah. I mean that was that was such a uh, uh, an important training ground for, oh. for a, a lot of us, including including myself. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, especially myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, speaking so speaking of the AACM, I mean, you you're you're representing time. You know, I always find find it fascinating. You're representing 
uh, uh, you know, vocalist in the sense, you know, you, you are a young black woman, you know, singing around all of these men in the city. What, you know, what were some of the, the challenges that you dealt with? Uh, if you dealt with any, you know, coming up and, and, and learning this music and, you know, being such around such a male dominated field as, I, as a young black woman. As a young black woman, the, the most important thing was always present yourself as a lady and that's how you be treated. And I've got nothing but the greatest respect from uh, from the brothers of the AACM. And if you need to tell or cuss a couple of them out, you do that. And then they, <laughs> they back up off you and they leave you alone and they respect you for that. You mm -hmm. know, not don't be afraid to stand your ground, but do it with a smile and do it like a lady. Because I'm, I'm not a man and I'm not going to try to bump my chest with a man. You know, women, we have our own way of getting what we want. And nothing happens if the woman doesn't want it to happen, so. Man, you better, come can on I, now. Can I get some snaps on that, ladies? <laughs> I'll snap on that. <laughs> now, that's real. That's real. Definitely, yeah, definitely. I mean, you, you, you get more with honey than you do with vinegar. And, uh, you know, <laughs> that's just the way that it is. <laughs> yeah. And I've had to, and I've had to, you know, I had to walk a path and learn that. And that wasn't something that I just rolled out of bed to discover, you know, because, you know, just be soft spoken. Well, you don't necessarily have to be soft spoken, but just stand your ground, if, especially if it's something that you're very strong about. That's what they do, and we can do it too. <laughs> yeah, that's that's real. That's real. Mm -hmm. I think, like you like you said, I mean, in, any you know, if you have a disagreement, you know, and I, I've been, it's so funny because I've been having, it's, I've been having a string of disagreements with my friends, some of my best friends. Mm -hmm. not like they're not going nowhere. You know right. what I'm saying? We 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 have been we've been along we've been too far along now. So they stuck with me. I I don't give a fuck what what they <laughs> care about. But but you know, um when you have a disagreement, to have the disagreement to say, Hey, I have this bone to pick with you, mm -hmm. right? And then you two, you know, you sort it out mm -hmm. and then hopefully you come to a, a new normal and a new understanding and a, and a respect for each other, even when mm -hmm. you disagree. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's easy to be friends with people when you agree with them. Yes. The, 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 <laughs> you exactly. know, the, hard, the hard part is when y'all when when y'all got beef, or not beef, but when you, when you, you know, y'all both feel a certain way and you right. got that, you got that pull because usually most of the time y'all like this, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's, that's the tough part, man. And, and that's, kind of what I've been getting into not being not being afraid to be like yo I'm, I'm not I'm not with that <laughs> well you know what works for me sometimes too Chris and my sons can attest to this is that you know uh sometimes if it's if it's something and the other person feels strongly about it and I feel strongly about it I'll retreat I'll just be quiet because silence speaks volumes and sometimes it's just best to just be quiet and then generally nine times out of ten the person will come back and say Girl, dad, you were right. You know, I thought about it. Instead, as opposed to beating each other over the head, you know, well, I was this way, you was that way, I was this way. You know, I, mm -mm, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't have time to do that. And I just go, okay, all right, go right on ahead. And then they'll you, come you, back and say, "Man, you were right." <laughs> so, I got you. So my son will say, "Man, I can't do that. My mom will snap." You know, <laughs> I just be quiet and just let you figure it out. <laughs> so. But that's 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 good that they know. At least you know it's, it's a very clear understanding. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we got a we got a we got a couple minutes left. I wanted to talk to you about um, a couple things. Okay. Um, when you know, being from Chicago, uh, I get asked a lot, or not even asked, but when when I mention I'm from Chicago, a lot of times it's like, oh man, you know, I, I know it's a lot of craziness going on there. Um, uh, you know, as a as a Chicago native, as somebody who lives there, um, you know, what what would you say to somebody who who hasn't been, but the, you know, they they hear about the violence in the city, they hear about uh, not not even really the crime, mainly mainly just the violence. I would say, mm -hmm. um, but what would you what would you say to somebody who might have have a neg a picture of a negative light of the city? Um, I yeah. We tell them, you know, violence is going on everywhere. It's not just in Chicago. It's everywhere there's people that have issues, there's going to be violence, you know, and, and don't, uh, you know, 
I know our city gets a bad rap and it's unfortunate because it's a beautiful city. It's a vibrant city. We have a history here. And yeah. if it was really, really that bad, I wouldn't even be here, you know, but I'm, uh, we're resilient. We Chicagoans, we're very resilient. Uh, we're steadfast, we're strong, mm -hmm. and I've got roots planted here. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what I tell them. You know, I go to Europe, you know, go to go to Italy, especially, you know, they say I'm from Chicago. Oh, yeah, Capone, Capone. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, man, no, no. Capone is, you know, he had his time and space and place. He's gone now. Mm -hmm. Chicago is a beautiful city. If you come and check it out for yourself, you'll see. Mm. On it, you know, I I had a yeah I had a friend recently who was you know we we had a uh we were talking about the South Side and, and and she was like you know I've been to Chicago so many times and I've never been to the South Side and it you know and it it got me you know it got me upset not not like furious but it it's it's frustrating because a lot of the violence that's perpetuated is a result of you know, the city of Chicago tearing down all of these projects, Yeah. you know, and, 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 and um, not giving people a home, you know, mm -hmm. um, there were very, there's very clear uh, gang territory that mm -hmm. were, that, mm -hmm. were, that were established, not, not, you know, not to necessarily uh, promote violence and chaos, but actually that helped to establish order. This territory is for these gangs, right? right? You yeah. got this block here, this block over here is for these gangs. But when you tear down people's homes, and they don't have anywhere to go, then you have a fight for territory. Yeah. And uh, the way New York dealt with it was they just sent a bunch of police into all the boroughs. They was like, you know, we just go, we're going to hire 50,000 policemen. You know, we're going to mm -hmm. do stop and frisk. And we, you know, and yeah, it, it cleaned up, but at what cost? Now now the prices is through the damn roof. You can't, you, you can barely afford yeah. to live anywhere. Uh -huh. um, you know, and meanwhile in Chicago, the plan, I feel like the plan was, yo, we're going to tear down the projects, they're going to kill each other off, and then we'll deal with it after that. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that, which is which is why you saw such a, bike, a, a, a spike mm -hmm. in violent crime since the 90s. Right. You know? Um, and then there are no so, creative outlets, you know, there are no creative outlets for the young people. You know, when I was growing up, yeah. we had, like, centers that we, my mother would send us to, you know, after school or in between school where we had art, we had music. You know, we did poetry, we we did theater, you know, theater arts. We had all of these things when we were growing up. And the kids nowadays, they don't have that. Look at how they, you know, snatching it out of the schools. Well, whenever they're back in school, you know, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's just a travesty, travesty because our young people, these babies are coming into a, a very, these babies come here bright as all get out. They have the equipment. It just needs to be nourished and flourished. If we had if we had some resources like they send to the to yes. you know to the suburban schools if they if we if they put the resources with the with with people who actually need them exactly. you know then uh, I I feel like it would it would be a much different story and picture you know you got to give people state things to do people have to have a sense of purpose in one way shape or form even if that purpose is hey I'm about to you know work here get some money retire and you live a simple life but you got to have a sense of purpose in this world absolutely you, you know absolutely uh, and 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 yeah man there, there's a lot of people who might seem lost but i always i truly believe you know not all who wander are, are lost so no absolutely not and these young people they're bright they're smart man they could if they just had a chance you know yeah just have a chance and i'm starting to get all worked up about it now because i nah. see I mean, I am, I, you know, because I, I look at my own granddaughters, they're 10 years old, you know, and, and what's, what is this world going to be like for them, you know? It's, <laughs> I just try to do my part. <laughs> I understand. No, you, you're, doing, you're doing an incredible job. You're doing an incredible job. Thank you. Um, we'll play, we'll play, uh, I'm, I'm going to play one more off the record. I wish, you know, I wish we had time for a couple more, but, but Instagram is real. They'd be like, all right. It is. That hour <laughs> it is. by quickly. <laughs> that hour be up, okay? They don't be playing. But we we gonna we gonna do this one. Uh, it, it features my boy. He he's been uh he's been featured on a couple of tracks on on this series. But this is Corey Wilkes. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, or he he's on the record, not features him, but you know, he's on the record. Can you talk about Corey a little bit? That relationship and and what and you know what what <laughs> uh, made you uh, put him on the album. Ah, oh, first and foremost, his, you know, he's my brother, he's my friend, my cousin, you know, and <laughs> and he's a phenomenal musician. So it was a no-brainer to have him on 
uh, on the recording, you know, and I was just happy that he was around because at the time he was just really, really busy and traveling all over the world. And, um, you know, and I know Corey, I know he can call on me and I can call on him and we'll both be there with each other. And I was just happy that he was there at the time. Yeah. Which yeah. track are you playing? I'm, I, I was going to do Nature Boy. Yes. Exactly. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. So we're going to get into a couple minutes of this. This is a song my mother loves by D. Alexander. If you haven't checked it out, please check it out. It's an incredible record uh, released in 2014. Uh, on here to tell her story. So with that being said, here's Nature Boy featuring my main man, Corey Wilkes. Corey, holla at me, bro. All right, <laughs> let's listen to this. <laughs> Corey Wilkes, that's my man. Another yeah. another one, just, he can lay in the pocket, you know? <laughs> yes, and with that muted trumpet. First pieces of advice you would go about telling them? Well, I would tell them to, to get together and work with a musician, you know, a piano player or a guitar player or what have you. Um, make sure that you, you know, learn a body of great uh, music, great, uh, great songs or standards, if you will. And uh, it's the most important thing is being able to communicate with the musicians, uh, knowing what keys your songs are in, knowing how to count the tempos. All these are things that I had to learn, you know, when I first came on the scene. And it's very good advice. And um, just to, you know, study your music, study your music. And that's pretty much it. And you know, listening to uh, the greats, listening to Ella, Sarah, Dinah, Nina, but also listen to great musicians, especially if you aim to like do vocalists or scatting. Um, it's very good to listen to like, because I, I, the advice that was given to me when I first made my attempt to scat, which I felt like a fish out of water, uh, like Henry Huff said, hey, why don't you go buy a Charlie Parker, you know, go listen, go buy a Charlie Parker record. So, you know, I go down to the Jazz Record Mart and I buy this Charlie Parker record and I brought it home. You know, the album. Shout out, shout out to the Jazz Record Mart. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Missed that spot. I know. And so I brought this Charlie Parker record home and I put it on and I listened to it and I listened to the whole thing. I was like, oh my God, I can't do that. You know, but see, the thing is, it's about making your own soup. That's, so that's my thing, you know, you or making your own cake. You add a little bit of this, a little bit of that, put a little Charlie Parker in there, a little West Montgomery, you know, add some smoked paprika and mix it up and see what you come up with. You come up with your own sound, you know. Yeah. Um, I think it's all important to, to thine own self be true and, and create and find your own voice. Find your yeah. own voice. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, what, 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 you know, in, in Chicago, what would you say... Um, you you had you you're actually one of the, mu the one of the rare musicians I know that also had a a, a job 
Yes. And, and the career of, of music, you know? So, um, Man. can you talk, uh, yeah, can you talk about balancing that? I mean, you know, and parenting and, you know, all of the yes. things. <laughs> uh, I spe- I, I'm sure Megan would love to hear this because, you know, at, at this moment, it's, it's, it's a very similar, uh, you know, a similar vibe. But can you talk a little yeah. bit about that? Yeah, you know what? I, I got a job. I, I went to uh, the, the uh, Urban League and I took a, you know, learned how to operate a computer. I got a job and I was still singing and things like that. And some people um, had said, uh, oh, you're not a real artist. You got a job. I'm like, huh. yeah, they, those people right now, right now I got a pension. Okay. And, uh-huh. I had, <laughs> and I had two children to raise. I had, they needed dental work. I needed, you know, we all needed to have, I needed to have medical insurance and health insurance. Yeah. And so I did. I made that sacrifice, and I and I uh, uh, retired from the University of Illinois. And you know, I didn't like Congratulations. it. it was, <laughs> you know, it was something that I had to do. And I'm yeah. now I have the radio show, and I have a pension, and I'm really grateful to, you know, to be able. And my sons are both doing great. You know, and they now you got you got the freedom to do what you want to do. I can do what I want to do, or don't want to yeah. do whatever. The yeah, be, you know, so. It was a challenge, but hey, that's what we do when we're when you're a parent. You challenge for your children, like our parents did for us. You yeah. you, uh, you sacrifice for your children, just like our parents did for us. So yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> um, what you know? Do you have like a uh, what was your most what has been some of your most memorable gigs in Chicago, or 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 the world? You know, I, I was just gonna start with the city, then I was going branch it. You know. Well, my first memorable concert, which kind of led me around the world, was a concert that I did in 2012 at Millennium Park, Um, a concert that I did uh, thanks to the Jazz Institute of Chicago. I got the shout out to the Jazz Institute of Chicago. Yeah, Um, yeah. (laughs) Justin says, let me hold $2, D. You so silly, Justin. (laughs) Yeah. We got we we got it we got about two we got about two minutes left. The Instagram just kindly informed me. The biggest one was when I did the concert in tribute to Nina Simone and Dinah Washington, Sirens of Song down at Millennium Park, and it was you know I did it the first I'm one of the rare ones that did it the first time and it got rained out and so they called Mm -hmm. me back to and asked me to do it that year September 11th. Wow the most beautiful night you could ever imagine. My mother calls it magical. And from that point, that took me around the world. I started going all over the world because of that concert. And I'm so grateful and indebted to Lauren Deutsch and to the Jazz Institute of Chicago. I hear you. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, I mean, you know, I think people recognize talent and it, it, it you know, uh, I'm, I'm glad that you had that shot to do it, but it was, it was, it's based off your own merit. You know, you're such an uh, incredible vocalist, inspiring. Um, and I just personally want to thank you for coming on. If thank we could give, if we could give D a, a virtual round of applause uh, for coming <laughs> on the show and, and, and sharing that knowledge, you know. And I, and I hope uh, moving forward, I hope that... Uh, you guys, Tuesday, uh, Corey Fonville. All right, thank you.